You know, every time I want to work on the electrical in the trailer, I have to come up here and disconnect the solar panel first. There's got to be an easier way. And I think I've come up with it. One thing I've seen in the comments uh, on this lithium battery is um, f some folks are uh, think that it, it, the heat stays on all the time that the temperature is below 40 degrees. Here you can see in the trailer here right now it's about 30 degrees. And you can see the battery here is 42 degrees. The way the heating element works in a Renogy battery is uh, that it doesn't heat unless it's being charged. So when the sun goes down, if you're on solar panels now, when the sun goes down, it's not being charged anymore, so it's not providing any heat to the battery. And you can use the battery down to, I think, minus four degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So, it, so during that time, it's not using any power to heat itself you're still using the power. The only time it needs to heat itself is when it's being charged because you're not supposed to charge lithium below freezing. So, you know, in the morning, the sun comes up, you get some rays on your solar panel, the battery senses that it's being charged and it automatically turns on its heat and warms itself up so it can accept the charge. So it's not heating itself just because the temperature drops below 40, it has to be below 40 and charging. Just uh, hope I hope I clarified that for you. The way my panel is set up right now, the power just comes into the panel. It goes through an inline fuse up there, uh, one for each panel, and then it feeds down into the trailer, down into the controller here, and onto the battery. But there's no switch in line, so every time I want to work on something down here, I got to go unplug the panel. And I figured there's got to be a better way. I tried looking up. Um, inline switches for solar and basically all I saw was things for houses, uh, very elaborate, some of them very expensive switches uh, for turning off your solar and that just didn't appeal to me and, and they were big and, and then other ones like I could put in a, just a, a circuit breaker like from a house but then you got to put in one of those metal boxes and I didn't want to do that. So I kept looking and looking and I found something that I think is going to work just fine. What I came up with was this audio inline circuit breaker for about $12 on Amazon delivered. <laughs> and it also works as a switch. Just by pushing this button, it trips it. And this is pretty, pretty nicely made and just easy to install without any big breaker boxes or anything like that. So I've got some other things I need to do on the trailer and I'm going to, which is why I needed to break the circuit in the first place. So I'll show you that and I'll show you uh, some bus bars that I'm going to install here in a little bit. I went with 30 amps because I don't think my panels will ever reach that and there's already uh, fuses, inline fuses on those. So I basically got this just for the switch. Well, this better work out after cutting an expensive cable like this. There, I cut a little sample for you. So you see the wire is silver colored because basically it's coated. So you don't see copper color, you see a silver color. And that keeps it from corroding. It's very important. Just to make the connection more solid, when I screw down the retaining uh, screws on this, I'm going to go ahead and solder these ends, make them solid. That's what the solder was for, was to make this more of a solid connection.
In case you're wondering, this is number 10 wire. I purchased it from uh, Bouge RV. They're a good supplier of that, of these kind of materials. There we go. That ought to do it. Now I can connect that solar panel up on the roof and uh, turn it off and on right here. Perfect. Another reason I did this is I want to be able to take this lithium battery out of here because the dead of winter is coming when it's going to be really cold. I'm not going to be using the trailer uh, in the, you know, when it's sub-zero here and that's coming. But I don't want this battery charging and, and uh, all, all winter long. I want to take it out. It'll prolong its life if I do that. So I'm going to take it inside. But, you know, you can't disconnect the battery without turning off the controller because when you install a solar controller before you hook it up to your solar panels you have to hook it up to a battery first it has to have a load down line from it otherwise you'll you'll damage the controller if you hook up the solar panels to this without hooking this to a battery first you'll damage your controller so I needed to be able to turn off the solar panel so that I could remove the battery for winter. Another thing is I didn't want to disconnect the solar panel on the roof and then and leave it like that for the winter and leave that MC4 connector up there open to the elements where it can corrode. Dirt, dust, bird droppings, you name it. I didn't want it up there sitting like that, so it's better to be able to turn it off inside the trailer. Now to get to the main reason why I installed that switch coming from the panel is I need a bus bar. You, you have to understand that this electrical system in this trailer is very, very simple, but it does need to be upgraded. How many things can you hook to the positive and negative terminals of a battery? Now, there isn't that many things attached to this, really. There's the power coming in. There's the power that goes over to the... to this distribution panel over here, which is just a cigarette lighter and some USB plugs and a voltmeter. Um, so one wire goes over to that. And the third wire um, goes to my refrigerator. So it's um, power from the controller right here and power over to that distribution panel on the left side of the trailer and then and then the uh, power for my uh, hardwired refrigerator. But I'm super happy with the bus bar I got. I never thought I'd be excited about a bus bar, but check this out. I mean, I thought I paid too much because this was $33 for this, but I'm really happy with the uh, quality. Let me get these out of the way. Well, first of all, it came with all these connectors uh, for both uh, smaller wire and uh, number 10 wire. And it's got all these stainless steel screws for making those connections. I got a negative bus and a positive bus, and they're really well made. It's uh, covered, of course, and uh, no, con con uh, no conductivity. Uh, these are plastic so that uh, you can't make a connection here. So anything that touches these can't uh, short. Look how nicely done this is. I got the one with quarter inch terminals. You can get them with bigger terminals if you want to. Very nicely done. and can hook up plenty of things. And the uh, negative one is the same way. So let's get started putting this together. Another thing I needed was a, I wanted to put an inline fuse in that had number 10 wire to match what I'm using, but I couldn't find one locally. So I could order one, but I didn't want to wait for it to show up. What I did manage to get was this 12 volt DC automatic circuit breaker. So I'm going to use that. The only problem is it's not shielded, so I'm going to have to put something over this when I'm done so it can't short out. Well, it's done. But I got to tell you, 
Spending the uh, better part of the afternoon working down there underneath that shelf wasn't near as much fun as I thought it was going to be. But it did work out. Got the wiring on the battery all neatened up, got the extra wires off of the battery. Here's the circuit breaker that I put in. You reset that by shutting off the power and turning the power back on. And then, get this strap out of the way. There we go. Just coming across here to the two bus bars. So now everything is all neatened up. Now you remember this packet of uh, connectors that came with those bus bars. These turned out to be junk. The metal was so thin and soft that they wouldn't hold a crimp. So I, good thing I had my own. So the bus bars themselves are great, but uh, these are bad. Uh, another thing to talk about here is uh, the ground system. One of my viewers brought up the possibility of using a floating ground like they do on a boat, but there's, you kind of, there's both on, the tra on a trailer. For example, your tail lights, your uh, brake lights, your turn signals, those are going to ground through the frame. The original interior lighting in a trailer is going to ground through the frame, although you could rewire it. My lighting still grounds through the frame of the trailer. I do prefer, though, to have a centralized ground because it's easier to take care of. And, you know, just to make sure that all the... You know, usually when things go bad with an electrical system, it's in some kind of corroded ground somewhere. So I do like all of my ground wires as much as possible to come back to one central bus where I can see all the connections and make sure everything is tight. So there is... That is a a central ground. That was almost like a floating ground, except it's not. Here's something else. When I had the AGM battery in here, and before that the lead acid, the battery did ground to the frame. And it still does because of the lighting that has to get back to that battery. So this lithium battery still grounds to the frame. The other thing, though, is that if you're charging from your car, then the battery has to ground to the frame because that's how it gets its, uh, that's how it completes the circuit, right? But with this lithium battery, I don't have it charging from the car right now. The reason is because lithium batteries are, you have to be careful how you charge them and you don't want to charge them directly off an alternator. And just to run some lights in my refrigerator, I didn't want to go through the expense of putting in a DC to DC charger. That's we don't have an inverter in the trailer either because, well, don't need it. We always use these uh, power stations, right? So I didn't want to complicate things by putting in a DC to DC charger. That will handle charging a lithium battery, but I, I didn't want to do the expense or the installation. So I don't charge off the car anymore. It's strictly off of solar panels, which has been fine. <laughs> it's not a problem. Usually we get enough sunshine during the day with 400 watts of solar and one battery, it's usually handled pretty good. So as you know, I like to keep things pretty simple and that's the way that I did this system here. Always room for improvement and now I have room to grow. Anyways, you guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you around.